out inside this basically this is just to give you guys a brief overview of what my life was like in the 80s versus also maybe a bit of brief history here and there along with hopefully just sharing some of the memories that I can recall of what I can recall based on these questions for you tonight. Well there were a few that were my favourites so they were Her Frame Roger Rabbit, Footloose, Dirty Dancing, Goomin in Vietnam and The Untouchables. There are again so many to list and I can remember what I was watching some of them which were The Looney Tunes, Dark Tales, Garfield, Yogi Bear Show, Scooby Doo and Tom and Jerry. Number three, What Are They? MASH, Duke of Hazard, Cosby Show, Full House, No Wonder Years, Alf, Fraggle Rock, What Now Were Thinking and Jason of the Classic, What Now New Zealand TV Children's Show. It's about the 80s here in New Zealand, just to give you a quick lowdown right now. So in the category music, New, Ze New Zealand singer Sharon O'Neill won Album of the Year and Top mu Female Music Vocalist at the Music Awards. I got you was a New Zealand number one hit that was from the group Split Ends and they also topped the charts in Australia and Canada. Dave Dobbin in the, continued his domination of the music scene, winning Best Maria Vocalist and Single There For You Ought To Be In Love from the Foot Troop Flats soundtrack. In the sports category, All Blacks won against France in rugby. The Neville team of New Zealand, the Silver Ferns, in August won their third world title in Glasgow. In cricket, the 80s was a golden era that was a controversial 1-0 home series victory that was made over the West Indies in 1980. In history, the Modern Language Act came into force on August 1st, 1987 and Te Reo Māori became an official language for us New Zealand Kiwis. The New Zealand films Tax incentives, incentives saw an unprecedented number of films that were being made, such as Goodbye Paul Pie, which was made in 1981, and another one that was made in 1981 was the first animated full-length feature of Fortress Flat, The Dog's Tale. Even though I didn't eat that much cereal when I was younger because obviously we were only given what we could at the time when we were younger when I was born and stuff obviously but what I can recall was like Coca Pops and Honey Puffs here in New Zealand. As we know basically women expressed an image of love and success through shiny costume jewellery such as large fox, gold earrings, pearl necklaces and clothing that was covered with sequins and diamonds. Punk fashion began, began as a rich, it gets both the hippie movement of the past decades and the materialist values of the current decade. So therefore, as we know, some of this fashion that we see today are recyclable, you'll see from everyday fashion that comes into play. Obviously for that also, it consisted of light coloured lips, dark and thick eyelashes and pink or red rouge, otherwise known as blush. In the early 1980s, for minimalism, fashionable clothing in the early 1980s included both unisex and gender specific attire. Widespread fashions for women in the early 1980s included sweaters like your turtle neck, crew neck, and v neck varieties, your fur lined puffer jackets, tunics, foxwood coats, velvet blazers, loose flowing knee length dresses with high cut and low cut neck lines. Varying sleeve lengths and made it in a variety of fabrics including cotton, silk, satin and polyester. High-listed loose pants, embroidered jeans, leather pants and designer jeans. Women pants of the 1980s were in general worn with long inseams, a style that was carried over from the 1970s. In the mid-1980s, however, of the year of 1984 to 1986 were the trend of bright colours for fashion. In the early 1980s, women became more the woman fashion became more colourful around the 1980s. This will include long wool coats, long flat skirts, slim line mini skirts, slightly tippered pants and stirrup ones, designer jeans, spandex, cycling shorts, extremely long and bulky squares. The aerobics craze of the early 1980s continued into the mid 1980s, however, too, but the clothes became more colourful than they were before. Well, the shoes of the mid 1980s included strippy sandals, kitten heeled sandals, 
pumps and kits. And the year well, I was born of 1987 to 1989. From 1987 until the early 1990s, the mini skirt was the only length supported by fashion designers. Although skirts of many lengths were acceptable to wear in the years before, all attention was given to the short skirt, especially among young teenage girls and young women at large. Shoulder pads became increasingly smaller, obviously. Accessories popular in Britain, France, and America included bright coloured shoes with thin heels, narrow multicoloured belts, berets, lacy gloves, beaded necklaces, and plastic bracelets. In the late 1980s, for women's apparel, however, that included jackets both cropped and long, coats both cloth and fake fur, reversible inside out coats, leather one side and keep and fake fur on the other, rugby sweatshirts, sweat dresses, poof dresses, baby jaw dresses, one with covering leggings or bike shorts, slouch socks, jumpsuits, mini skirts, stretch pants, taper pants, skirts one with leggings, hippie pants, homemade pants made in bold designs with bright colours obviously. And obviously in saying this, like slouch socks and kids or spearies or with opaque tights. And obviously in saying this basically maybe you're wondering the question, well what is your favourite style of fa favourite fashion in the 80s? I've got to say that some I felt kind of comfortable having mini skirts and actually denims in it, even though I did not start wearing minis until maybe in my late teens. However, just to let you know, and that in saying this, that I also remember wearing overalls, like denim overalls, slash, obviously, I've seen some corduroy overalls that's just been on sale in certain places, too. Also, just to be in mind, also, the hairstyle in the 80s were basically your mohawk or your typically big curly buffin and heavily styled kind of hairdos. Television shows such as Dynasty obviously helped popularise the high volume of an glamorous image associated with this woman. Obviously, from the 1980s, with bright, heavy makeup, and some other hitters, as I mentioned, has been known for mullet, mohawk styles that are tall, jerry curls, flat tops, and high top face, which became popular styles amongst. Women though, however, large hairdos, puffed up styles, permanent waves, and softer cuts typified the decade. Michael Jackson and Whitney Houston was one of the many of that I can think of in the A. One was Living on the Prairie by Bon Jovi, Time After Time by Cindy Lauper, and How Will I Know by Whitney Houston, plus a few other songs of hers, as well as Michael Jackson's, as well as some other singers in bands that I can th can't think of at this point of time that carried over to the 90s as well since so, so I was a bit of a 80s, 90s girl since I was born as a kid in the late 1980s which is 1987 and some of the good music started to come out people debate about you know in the 90s but you can be the judge so you guys thanks for listening and obviously I wanted to ask you guys a few questions maybe if you want to do this tag whoever's watching feel free to do so I might know who's going to be watching but I'll tag you guys if you're interested so we can get to know each other a bit more obviously of in, in the background there as well as in saying this also I'm going to ask you a few questions if you don't wish to participate as baby in your year, what was your favourite hairstyle, your music, artist and band, as well as maybe, you know, your favourite food type. So enough of the guys, thanks for support, thanks for watching, do what love, love it, do until next time, I'll see you again soon.